There are a lot of advantages to proper pruning, but cutting into a perfectly healthy plant, well that can be a little intimidating and lead to a lot of questions. So in today's video, I'm going to help take some of the fear out of pruning so you'll have a better idea of how and when and where to make the right cut. We've heard that pruning is important, but more often than not we're paralyzed into doing nothing for fear of making a mistake. But by not pruning, that could be the biggest mistake. We have to prune for several reasons. To control size or shape, to remove dead or diseased branches or limbs, to improve structure and the one that makes believers out of all of us, to stimulate new growth or flowering. Now cutting back or pruning to stimulate new growth, that is so counterintuitive. But once you understand the science behind it, it's a game changer. Take this oak leaf hydrangea for example. Now this tip bud is called the terminal bud and within the bud there's a growth suppression hormone called auxin. And as long as that hormone is there, it's signaling these side buds to remain dormant. But once I make the cut, the suppression hormone is gone. In response, these former dormant buds begin to grow rapidly and for every one cut, I get two branches. And now that you know a little science behind the cut, here are a few more tips to make you a pruning ninja in no time. First, timing is everything. Know that there are better times of the year to prune than others. Late winter or early spring is generally the best time to prune, just prior to new growth starting to develop. Although pruning does stimulate new growth, that doesn't apply during dormancy, since dormancy trumps the rest. The next best time is early to midsummer, after full leaf expansion. But much of a plant's stored energy has gone into producing all that new growth of spring. If you cut this new growth off, you've wasted the energy. Now the plant is stimulated to put on new growth, which can be stressful to the plant in summer when conditions are likely to be dry and hot and reserves are at a premium. And lastly, early to mid-fall is the least favorable time to prune. Pruning then can signal the plant to produce new growth just as it's sending nutrients and energy into reserves for the cold months ahead. Not only can valuable reserves be diverted back into new growth, new growth can be damaged or killed by colder temperatures, creating access points for overwintering pests and diseases. Next, know the rule of thumb for proper timing on when to prune certain flowering plants. Some bloom on current season's growth, so they should be pruned in late winter because they'll bloom in the same year. One of the best examples of that is butterfly bush, but some other common examples are abelia, clethora, spirea, which is this, and some examples of hydrangea, including Annabelle. Other shrubs produce flowers on old growth or wood that was produced in the previous year. If you were to prune them in late winter, you'd be cutting off all the flower buds. Not a good idea. The best time to prune those type of plants is usually around midsummer, right after they bloom and before they've had a chance to set new buds. Some common examples of these kind of plants include azalea and rhododendron, which are these, forsythia, hollies, and some types of hydrangea, including mophead and oak leaf. And know where to make the cut. For plants with a single bud below the area you want to cut, find a place on the branch about a half an inch above an outward facing bud, and then make the cut at an angle with the high point facing out also. For stems and branches with buds located in pairs, also known as opposite, make the cut about a half an inch above the bud set and straight across. Finally, know the limits on how much to cut. A good rule of thumb is to take no more than a third of the total length of the branch measuring from the tip back. Now of course there are exceptions to every rule and some plants can handle severe pruning, but you can't go wrong by sticking to the rule of one third. Now, you know, there's really no need to fear pruning. Once you just convince yourself that most plants benefit from pruning, then it's just a matter of getting started and building your confidence. And before you know it, you'll be fearlessly pruning like a pro.